All right, so I'm gonna go from the beginning to the end on how I basically import my Motion Cam Pro files. So I just shot some video here. And what I'm doing first, I'm gonna go to my phone, drag those files, the compressed files, and bring them to my hard drive first. What I'm gonna quickly do here, I've got all of my footage right here. So I'm gonna do is take my footage, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out. I'm gonna hit the cut button. And then I'm going to a folder where I have my project already ready. This is the footage folder. I'm gonna go to video and I have a folder called raw. I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to paste these into here. All right, sweet. So once that's finished, I'm all done there. That took a little bit of time, depending on your, your computer. It took about 12 minutes for me on my computer. I got them all on my hard drive now. Now what I'm gonna do is jump into the Motion Cam Pro app here and I'm gonna go to add uh, files to render. I'm gonna click on that. It's gonna pop it up. You wanna go to where you just saved them. And here they are. I'm gonna go ahead and select all of those. Now we see we got them all inside of here. Now mine are a little bit stretched out because I shot them with an atomorphic lens. So I'm gonna need to uh, de-squeeze them, which we'll get into in a little bit here. Basically, there is my footage looking nice and good. So it was shot during the day. I controlled pretty much all of my exposures. I don't think I'm really, and my ISO, I kept it as low as possible. So I'm gonna leave all of this stock. I don't need to change anything here. I will use apply vignette to correction to DNGs and I will put uh, compressed DNGs. I don't want them to be fully uh, full size. So then I go down to here, render options. I'm gonna export out DNGs. I don't want ProRes or Cineform only. And those are only available on the pro option. So from here, we're gonna go uh, select where you want to store these rendered files. Here, I already have a folder inside my raw folder called rendered render and I'm going to go ahead and hit select and then just hit render. So it's going to go ahead and render all of these. Once they're finished, we'll jump inside DaVinci Resolve and I'll kind of show you a little bit of extra stuff that I like to do to really to to get them to look nice and cinematic. All right, guys, so I got my files. They're all in and they basically finished rendering out. So now I'm going to jump inside DaVinci Resolve. For me, I got an auto batch file that I already got saved up like my template and I literally can just click on this here and it will automatically start DaVinci Resolve with my template and all my settings. If you guys are interested in learning how to do something like that, let me know down in the comments and maybe we'll cook up a video on how to set up an auto batch file like this here. Now, there is no right way or wrong way. There's many ways to do what I'm about to do here. This is just the way I do it to achieve the look that I get, all right? So first thing first I like to do is go ahead and set up my whole file first here. Let me bring this down to a single monitor. And what I'm gonna do before I bring any files in, I'm gonna go over here and set up my files, right? I'll set up my color ma management stuff. So color management, I'm going to just use DaVinci Resolve RGB, YRGB stock, but I'm going to go to color raw and I'm going to change this to cinema DNGs, full res, uh, camera metadata. I'm going to switch it to project. I'm going to leave these unchecked and then I'm going to come down here again to where it says color space. Rec 709 is not going to hold enough data for what we're working with, right? So I'm going to switch that and I'm just going to select black magic design. OK, and from here, I'm just going to hit OK and save. Now I'm going to go to the folder where my my files were saved. And again, I've got all this preset already burnt into this temp file. So all my I don't have to keep doing that repetitive stuff over and over and over, which saves time. Go into my folder, there it is, footage and video, raw. We want renders, right? So I'm just gonna drag the renders folder and I'm gonna bring it straight in. Boom, there's all my files right there. Now, again, if I click on these, these still need to be de-squeezed. These are still stretched, right? So the way I de-squeeze them, I select all of them. Make sure we select everything. I right click on here in the middle I go down to clip attributes and then from here, pixel aspect ratio, I'm going to switch this to 1.33. Hit OK and then boom, now my all my footage is uh, squeezed, de or animatedly, it's all squeezed. It's all the proper aspect ratio that we need it to be. And here's all my clips. Now right off the back, I'm not, I'm, I mean, these look great, right? These look great but there's still not a lot of data that's not being shown that's actually there in the background right so i'm going to start off with here again when i was telling you about trying to get foreground shots and stuff like that like i got these little oranges here unfortunately it did miss focus on this it didn't focus rack like i tried i wanted it to but here's another example good got something in the foreground just to add a little bit more depth to the shot I'm going to choose a good shot here go ahead and pick this fire shot here and this is what we got straight off stock right let me see if I can go full screen so you guys can see that. That does show up nice. So this is what we got coming in here. 
not bad, right? Not bad, but it's going to get a lot better. Let me skip out of that. Jump over to the color tab. And what I'm going to do first here is I'm going to click on the raw setting. I'm going to go to projects, uh, decoding using projects and switch it to clip. And then from here, I'm going to take the color space and change it from DaVinci uh, from Blackmagic to P3D60. All right. And then I'm going to change the gamma all the way down to linear. All right. And now that looks like garbage, but stick with me. We're going to fix this right now. What I'm going to do is here is I'm going to drag on a color transform. And then boom, what we're going to do is copy these settings onto our color transform. So what we did, we used a P3D60. If you hit the P key and then scroll down one time, there it is, P3D60. Come in here, hit the L key, linear. There it is. Now it's linear. Already, now you can see the difference. We made a big difference uh, right there. And I'll, let me go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so we can see and cut some of this X. There we go. So this is what we got here now. Let me go. You hit D on here, control D. That was before. Now this is after, right? Now we still look at our range here on our gram, on our on our uh, scope here. Look at all this data we got. We can get more data. There's more still hidden. So what I'm going to do is press Alt S S. It's going to give us three nodes, right? We got one in the middle here, which is going to do nothing for the moment. And this last node here, let me click on this last node. And again, we're going to basically, we're going to repeat something here. So matter of fact, hang on, let's go back to our first one. Let me go back to our first one because I still forgot. Right now, it, it's sending it out to Rec 709 because right here, use timeline. And my timeline is set to send everything to Rec 709. So I'm going to switch this. We're going to go to Alexa Wide Gamut 3. And let's go Alexa Log 3. And the reason I chose Alexa, because I know Alexa's gamut profile and log profile can hold a lot of data, right? They can hold a lot of data. So I'm going to go and choose those. And then I'm going to click on here, Tone Mapping Method. Turn that off. We want none because we want all of our data to be free, right? And then from here, we're going to copy these settings onto our last node here. Okay, let's go to our last node and let's copy that last settings that we put. Let's put a color transform space on here. And input, we were using Alexa Wide Gamut 3 with Alexa Log C3, right? And now it's sending it back out at Rec 709. That's why it looks so dark like this because Rec 709 can't handle all that data. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to change it up just a little bit. At this point, you could be done. But what I'm going to do here, I'm going to actually take this. OK, yeah, we do want Rec 709. So I'm going to go to Rec 709. But I'm going to go to Output Gamma. For me, I'm going to choose 2.2 because I grade in a fairly lit environment, right? So that's just going to change things up. So if you were basically in a dark environment, you might probably want to use uh, like 2.4 or something like that, or in a dark environment, opposite. But anyways, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to 2.2. Now, what I also want to do here is, again, I want to change my tone mapping. I want to take my tone mapping from DaVinci, and I want to set it to luminance mapping. All right. And then once I do that, we're pretty much good to go. Now, if you prefer, you can turn this apply forward OOF. OOTF, you can check this off and it's a little bit more brighter, more like a flat look, or you can use it like this. To me, this is closer to what I was actually shooting. Again, I shoot everything slightly underspose, slightly towards the left, uh, basically. So I prefer to do it this way here. And then from here, what I would do before I start getting crazy, if you want to make any adjustments to your clip, which what I tend to do is I make them inside of here in the camera raw tab. So like I one thing I always tend to do is I always boost the colors like 10 and then I always take my midtone details and I boost that up like 10. Right. And that's what I basically do in here. And it does look a little bit dark here. I could lift it up or cha change my shadows, but I'm, I'm actually happy with the way this looks here because my highlights are nice and tame. Everything looks great. OK, so that's pretty much what I'm doing. Then I'm done. I would use this middle one here now if I wanted to start doing like my grade, if you wanted to start just basically grading it up here. I will come in here and make all my adjustments on that and try to keep it in between in between this world here. So in between my color space transforms. So that's how I would set these files up. And I try to shoot my stuff as close as possible right then and there. So I don't have to do too much work like this. is This looks great to me. This is where I want it to be. And then I would just add a statilize if you want to add a teal and orange or something. If anything, I would lift up my blacks. It might be a little bit crushed. So I would come in here. And maybe let's say I'll go to my log wheel and just lift up those blacks a little bit, right? I prefer to have that little flat, flatter look on the blacks there. 
something like that. And pretty much, I mean, that's it. I don't want to do a lot of post work, right? And then again, I tend to a lot of times like to uh, I call Alt S. I like to use the uh, the Dehancer plugin, which I actually have right here. I'll drop the Dehancer plugger on here, plugger plugin. And then again, stylized look here. Um, I tend to go for the uh, uh, the uh, this one right here, Super 16, uh, and basically, you know, just set up my set up my look how I want it to be. Um, let's see here, color density. I like to crank that up here. And then what I like to do is take the color head wheel, gain them together, slightly give me that little bit of greenish aqua color in there a little bit. I like to take the film resolution, make it 100%. And then I take this down to like five as far as the, um, the noise, the amount of film grain. I like to bring that down a little bit. And then, um, sometimes I use halation bring a little bit of halation in there. And I like the bloom here. But in this case, I probably won't use bloom because I was using a Promis filter. So um, this kind of double the work, right? So, and that's it. And then I'll add a little vignette if possible, if, if I'm in, into that mood, there it is. And this is, this is a little bit too heavy for me. So I probably just won't even use that. So basically this is what I would be at if I uh, was to do this, grade this up. Again, the grain is coming in a little bit hard. So I'll probably bring that down a little bit, but this is far from looking like a shot it was shot on a cell phone. Like really like <laughs> this doesn't look like it was shot on a cell phone, right? I hope that helps you guys out as far as getting your stuff together with the motion cam. Again, this is just my process and how I do things. Uh, you, I'm quite sure everybody else has a different way of the way they do things, but this is how I do it. So if you also want to know the four steps that I kind of use or four mistakes that I see people making a lot when they're shooting with their cell phones, take a look at this video and it hopefully will help you guys out. Patrick LeVar, keep filming. It's the only way you'll get better.